started. Great. Hello and good morning. My name is Sarah Whiteside and I'm the director of the Mid Valley STEM CTE Hub. Before we get started here, are just a few technical notes to help this presentation run smoothly. Please be sure if you haven't done so already to set your screen to speaker view and up in the right hand corner, you can do side by side speaker. And that should work well, great. Um, we've got everyone muted and your cameras, if you would be sure to turn those off so we can save bandwidth. We'll turn those back on at the end for questions. Speaking of questions, we've got the chat open. You can put your questions at any time and we'll gather those for some Q&A at the end. We've also got a short survey that we'll put in the chat if you could please help us with feedback about the presentation. So let's get started. I am so excited to welcome you to our STEM week presentation today with Unruly Splats. For those of you who don't know us, the Mid Valley STEM CTE Hub works here in Lynn and Benton counties to enhance and elevate STEM and CTE opportunities for learners of all ages. We work with educators, students, families, business and industry, and community organizations to bring folks together to solve problems, learn, and have fun. We also get to work with amazing people like our presenters today. We are so fortunate to have uh, Marissa and Michael with us today. Here's some information about them. Marissa Labadini is a di digital marketing specialist at Unruly Studios. Uh, she is a senior at the University of New Hampshire, pursuing a bachelor's degree in marketing and entrepreneurial studies. For the past two years, she has been a peer advisor where she has guided first year students through a mentorship program designed to cement the foundation of their college experience. And this has sparked her interest in providing students with resources that can lead them to success. Welcome, Marissa. We also have Michael Fricano, who is a, a K through six design and technology teacher at Lolani School uh, in Hawaii. He is also a Google certified trainer, a code.org computer science discoveries facilitator, and has been presenting on ed tech topics for more than 10 years. His teaching passion center around computer science, augmented and virtual reality, maker education, and purposeful cross-curricular technology integration. Welcome to Michael and Marissa, and we will let them go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Sarah. Amazing, thank you, Sarah, for the introductions. I'm super excited to be here today. So today we're gonna to be talking about um, easy ways to mix coding and play. So we have a few games that we're gonna play as well as Michael's gonna share some of um, his experience and in incorporating play into his computer science program. Um, so to start off, thought we would do a quick do now. So in the chat, if you wanna introduce yourself, tell us what subject you teach and also your favorite summer activity. Feel free to type that in the chat. And then also a great fun fact for today is it's International Hummus Day, which is amazing because I love hummus. Um, so really great. Great, so I'll give a few moments for that. Um, Michael, what is your favorite summer activity? Uh, I'll just type in, My, mine is to go to the pool. Well, I like to go to the beach too, but I, I the pool's less messy. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> it's kind of like lakes versus oceans. Yeah, it's um, hard for me to say that because I live in Hawaii, trying to buy beaches, but I do enjoy a good pool. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> Eating hummus for my summer park picnics. I love that. Great. So we'll go in a little bit more. Um, so Sarah gave us fabulous introductions, but um, Michael, if you want to just quickly reintroduce yourself too again, um, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Yeah. My name is Mike Fricano. I'm uh, uh, this year. I'm serving as a K through six design and technology teacher. We have a brand new makerspace at, at our school that finished construction at the end of last school year, and um, so I, I co-teach uh, design and technology class to all kindergarten through sixth grade. So it's like a combination of computer science, um, engineering uh design skills things like that um yeah and i live in hawaii that's great I can't complain. Thank you. i have fun all day <laughs> live in a great place <laughs> coding play and the sun i don't know what's better than that <laughs> um but yeah so i'm marissa i work on the unruly studios team on the marketing team which we'll talk about a little bit later on about what splats are um Great. So let's just keep the chat rolling. Um, yeah. If you want to tell us what your experience is so far with block-based coding, um, that'd be great too. So 
keep those responses going. And then also in the chat, if you want to tell us any of your favorite coding tools and resources that you use in your class. Um, so feel free to write those in the chat, but we'll keep on going. So to start off, we're going to play one of our games. Um, it's called Quiz Show. So it's a Jeopardy style game, but it's a great way to introduce block coding um, to your students for the first time without really diving into the code and building the blocks. So let me um, pull up this lesson plan that we have and share. So I thought we'd play a quick few rounds of Quiz Show. Um, so any yeah. takers on which one to start with? Michael, do you want to pick the first one? Sure. Um, I'll take I'll take order up for 600, Marissa. Great. Order up for 600. Um, so you click right to it. So the question is, correct the order. Write the letters um, in order top down. So the prompt is play piano note 60 for one second. Um, so you'll want to order these um, into the correct sequence to make that um, sound. So it could be like B, My A, answer? E. Um, we can write the answers in the chat. Oh, okay, that? okay, okay. Because it is this one is kind of a few letters, takes a minute. So I'll give everyone a couple seconds here. C, S, E, B, A, D. Great, great answers so far. So then you can just click to the next slide. Um, we also offer a timer feature. So if you want to time your students, you can use that. Um, but let's see. Yep. So C, B, A, D. So uh, set, yeah. set instrument to piano on spot one, play note 60 on spot one, delay one second, and then turn off spot one. I was thinking maybe the, the delay came after, but it, it makes sense. You want the note to hang a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of cool because that, that, that leads to really good discussions about why you know, yeah. If, yeah, if, if I said delay comes last and uh, I forget who said delay comes third, we could have that conversation. You know, why, why do you think that? So it's kind of a good, a good conversation starter around computer science. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think too, like, this is a great experimental part where you could then go into the app and then try yeah. both versions and then compare the differences. Um, so then you really like fully understand why the delay would happen first. Um, so there's a lot you can do. Cool. Let's do a few more. Um, Anyone in the audience want to type, type up what's next to play? I think did who who answered first? Yeah, was that, <clears throat> was that Chris? Maybe or Chris. Lauren. <laughs> it does what for a thousand? Lauren says. Okay. He's going Lauren big. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. So it does what? What does this code do? Pick one true answer. So either A, play the sound cat eight times. B, play the sound cat six times. C, play the sound cat four times. This program doesn't play any sounds. Or E, math. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a few seconds here to look over the code and um, submit your guesses. So this one only has one answer. B, I'm out. <laughs> Great, I'll give a few more seconds. <laughs> oh, confused. It's too early for math for me, I think. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's very early. Yeah, so we can move on. This one is tricky. That's why it's a thousand spot bucks. Um, so the correct answer oh. is B. So right here you can see when the program starts, one plus one equals two. So that's correct. So it would make one spot, one cat sound, two plus two equals four. So that's another cat sound. Um, three plus five doesn't equal nine. So that one wouldn't play and then play, repeat four times the cat sound. So that would equal six. Um, it's a little tricky. That's why it's a harder question. <laughs> Great, let's do one more just for fun. Michael, do you wanna pick the last one? Sure. <clears throat> let's go with uh, find that bug for a thousand. Great. That's the last one, yeah. 
Awesome. So for this one, you'll want to move one block to play note 68 for five seconds. So you're going to move one of these lettered blocks uh, um, somewhere else to play note 68 for five seconds. A lot of music ones today. You got two music ones. So in the chat, maybe type what block you think, and then I can talk about where it would go. Few more seconds. This is kind of a tricky one. We we're picking a letter and we're saying where we would move it to. Yeah. So where do you think? Um, yeah. Oh, so no, you said right. move block D before no, delay five sense. seconds block. Yeah. So let's look. I was looking at it wrong. Yeah. No. I, you made that made sense. So you would move block. D, the 68 to um, right before the delay five seconds. Um, oh, right I see, time. I see. Okay. So yeah, that's a little confusing to do over chat, but um, you had the right idea, which is great. So um, then it would delay five seconds and play. So perfect. Cool. Um, so that's a little bit about what quiz show looks like. It's a really great, um, easy lesson plan that our team created that you don't even need the app to use. We have it on our website um, for free download. So definitely check it out. Um, but going back into the presentation now, um, so we played a little game to warm us up, but now I really want to talk about the philosophy of Unruly Splats. So here at Unruly Studios, we're all about incorporating active play um, with block-based coding. So we combined computer science with physical movement and collaboration, and I've found really great success in schools with students get feeling motivated about computer science, their engagement is high, and they're asking for more and really just excited to code more. Um, so we do this with using our splats. So if you're not familiar with splats, um, students use our splats app um, and code their games either using a Chrome browser or an iPad and then they play those games out using our physical splats. So our physical splats look like this. They're clickable floor buttons that light up, make sound, collect points. You can stomp on them, you can press them, you can do all sorts of things like that. So students enjoy making collaborative games like relay races, whack-a-mole, dance parties, all sorts of games like that. So what we like to say when you're first starting out with splats is the rules for the game are the rules for the code. So when you're first starting and you're not familiar with coding, um, we'll say, let's pick a game, let's write down those rules of the game and then take those rules and slowly build our code until we have an active game, um, which is great. So you use that right on our splats app, which here's a little closer up version of it. We have all sorts of blocks um, to pick from and then you can um, code your games out and then even test your games using our virtual spots here on the left so you can make sure there's no bugs in your code before you really bring it to life um, with the rest of your students. Great and then I want to just show you a quick video of what spots really look like in the classroom once the game's coded and all the students are ready to play. Um, so this is a video of four corners being played out in a classroom in Ohio. So let's take a look. <laughs> Five. Again. All right, go back. Again, again. Should we do it again for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. do it for you guys. Ready? Five more times. Okay, get ready. Go. Uh, <laughs> I'll stay. Three. 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 Which one went up? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> a poor kid. <laughs> All those jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way. So yeah, for this four corners, it's whatever splat color shuts off. And then instead of um, having them go out, this teacher had them do jumping jacks instead. We've also had some other teachers do like math problems or have to answer a history question if that like corner goes out. So there's a lot of different ways um, you can utilize the spots for sure. 
So moving on. So Michael, do you want to tell us about how you've kind of discovered splats and brought it to your school? Yeah, sure. I think it was, um, it came from a tweet. I don't remember who, maybe, maybe it was unruly splats review. It was a, this, someone I, I knew on Twitter was just sharing about these cool, you know, extremely durable stomping pads. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe along with it, I saw, because you guys did a video um, showing like how durable it was and someone just like pounding the heck out of a splats pad. I'm like, that's what I need in my class <laughs> to get my kids out of, you know, out of their seats. Um, and yeah, and you know, at, at that point I was teaching a technology class and computer science was, was a big part of it, obviously. And typically, um, you know, computer science in a classroom means, you know, kids sitting at their desks on a device, you know, learning how to block base code or create, create games on their iPads or their computers. And it's a very, you know, it's, it's fun. The kids really enjoy it, but there's not a lot of active you know, activity going on. Right. And so seeing something like splats and thinking like, Oh, I can get my kids out of their seats. Um, whatever they code, they can, you know, pretty much instantly try it out on a splats pad or using their virtuals, but just, just the connection between physical play and, and, and computer science was, was a huge hook for me. And, um, yeah, so on the left here, um, as a way to introduce my kids to splats, I, I set up a couple stations and used some of the, uh, the pre-made splats games that are in the iPad app and just um, set up different games at these stations and then had them rotate every five minutes um, and had a couple of kids play, play those games just, just to get familiar with what, what, the, what the splat can do. And then you know, there was an iPad there with the, with the game on it so, you can, so they could see the code um, in action as they were playing the game become more familiar with it. And then sort of as an end result to this on, on the right, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about it a little bit more later, but um, students created their own splat programs tied to a physical, uh, a, a, you know, some type of uh, you know, typical exercise like, like jumping jacks or push-ups. So they incorporated splats into that exercise. And then we had a day where parents came to campus to learn about all the things they do in school. And so one of, one of those activities for the parents was to visit our computer lab and and play their children's um, splat games and do a little exercise themselves. Oh, that's so great. I love yeah. the um, parent involvement too. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, kids have been so excited to share with their parents what they've been doing in class. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, great. So moving on, um, you kind of already told us about your school and your CS program, but is there anything um, maybe we missed or you want to add? Um, oh, that's okay. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see. Yeah. So so splats. I mean, it's it's a part of our computer science program. It's it's not the whole thing. You know, we we also incorporate code.org and we, we use other apps just to expose students to different ways to incorporate um, programming and in, into their and in, you know, to to the, the things that they they enjoy, their passion, um, and um, uh, I think for me. Or for for my or for our class, we we incorporate splats into to uh, it's like first through third grade at this point. We're looking to expand that now that we're more comfortable with the tools. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Can't think of anything else. Great. Yeah, it's exciting Sorry. that you want to expand splats. That's yeah. really awesome. Uh, <laughs> So moving on to the next question. So how have you seen um, computer science promote student-led learning with your students? I think, you know, it's all about, you know, how, how you incorporate these tools and how much flexibility and creative freedom you give students um, as you're, you're teaching them to use these tools. So of course, in the beginning, we all start out, you know, at, you know, for us, at least with Splats, it was working through the tutorials, learning the basics, and then giving them a fairly open-ended project um, like the, the physical exercise challenge, um, where they, they have, you know, choice, um, as to what exercise they, they want to incorporate and how they want to incorporate the splats into that. So knowing the basics, then they, then they can decide, you know, do I want to incorporate light? Do I want to incorporate sound? Do I want to keep track of score? Do I want to use more than one splat? Um, and then, you know, uh, allowing them to take that direction and, and, you know, hit, hit hurdles along the way. And you know, I, I, I always encourage and, um, you know, talk to my students about how, you know, failing is, is important in the learning process. And so, you know, coming to a point where something's not working and, um, learning from that experience and, and moving forward and maybe having to make changes along the way. Um, 
really helps them to, you know, definitely to, to grow in their learning experience and create something that's unique and special um, to them. Yeah, those are all really great points. I think too, when you give them that opportunity to kind of have a choice and um, learn as they go type of thing, they're more excited to share it with other students and kind of um, teach other students how to do like the game they created as well if someone yeah, else is definitely. struggling. So it kind of gives yeah. them that sense of confidence um, yeah. and willingness to share and maybe even like with their parents when they come into class. Uh, so that's great. Yeah, and, and what's cool too is like when you, when, when I gave my students that, that creative freedom to, to choose you know, what parts of the class they want to incorporate, you know, some became experts at, at, you know, learning how to incorporate um, the lights in, in particular ways. And some, you know, became an expert at um, using the, the, the scorekeeping options, right? And so they all become these experts at, at certain things. And then, you know, I, I try to incorporate opportunities for them to be able to, to share off of each other. So usually that's, you know, where they're testing each other's programs out. That's also, you know, sort of like a, a, a hidden opportunity for them to see what others are doing and then take those ideas um, and you know, try to try to bring it back to their own programs. So they're they're testing other people's work, giving them feedback, but then also sort of you know stealing others' ideas and, and finding new ways to to improve upon their own uh, uh, their own programs. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Great. So uh, moving on, how have you seen problem solving um, throughout your coding programs? Um. Yeah, so it's definitely through through the, the the challenges they face. You know, when I with with any tool, really, I don't I don't make it a point to become the expert first, so that I I'm the the all knowing, you know, teacher at the front of the class that can help them answer any question they have. I, I sort of learn along along way. So when I first started with Splats, you know, we all worked through the tutorials together, and I was learning alongside of them. And and in most cases, the kids were learning far faster than I was and, and picking up on things a lot quicker than me. And, um, you know, when, when, when they do run into a problem, you know, if, if I know the answer, I'll try to help guide them towards that answer. But, you know, often it's, you know, I'm not sure, but I, you know, I think, you know, Timmy over there has, has some experience with that. Why don't you go talk to him? It's just sort of you know, guiding him to those, those student experts in the room that have, that I know have already, kind of dealt with with the, the the problems that they're facing and have have you know, persevered through them um yeah should should i share this one particular experience that's in this this quote here this is the, yeah, I'd love one of my favorite hear. stories yeah was flat. <laughs> so i think um i think this was this was a first grade i was working with first grade and they were working on their their physical exercise challenge so they were building programs with splats to use those splats with a physical exercise you know, to, to keep track of score or um, uh, to keep track of, of repetitions in time. And one student, she wanted to, we hadn't, haven't, hadn't explored this yet, but she wanted to, um, I believe it was uh, either keep track of time or, or delay something from happening uh, for a certain amount of time. We, we hadn't gotten to that point yet, um, but she was already thinking about that, you know, knowing that it's something I wanna do it, it, it's got to be possible, but I'm not sure how to do it. So she came up and asked me about it. And, you know, I, I to be honest, I, say I, I have no idea how to, how to do that, but I'll do a little research myself and we can talk about it next time. And so, you know, she said, okay. And she walked back to her seat and continued working. And then uh, uh, five minutes later, she, she ran up to me super excited. and was like, Mr. Fercano, I think I figured it out. Can I show you? I was like, yeah, yeah. Show me what you got. And, and she, 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 she did it on her own. I mean, she, she didn't go back to her seat defeated and, and move on to something else. She stuck with it and tried to figure it out on her own, even though she was told um, by her teacher that that you know I, I had no idea what how to do that. She figured it out, and then I had her share it with the rest of the class, and a lot of the other a lot of other classmates incorporated the same ideas into their programs as well. Because it's you know it was trying. I think it was like um, like giving giving you a certain amount of time to do so many exercises, so like a delay until like the the final buzzer plays. Um, and of course, you know, with, with any exercise, you know, a lot of the other kids wanted to do the same thing. And, um, it was just a really cool, small moment, uh, but a, a really big moment for that student who, um, you know, persevered and, and problem solved on her own and figured it out and then was able to share with the rest of her class. And, and, and yeah, it was just a really cool moment. Yeah. I think that's a great way to really learn and understand something too. I found when I take that extra like few moments to persevere and show that resiliency through 
um, solving that problem, you really, that really stays with you and stays in your brain. And then you're able to share and teach others too. So that's great. Yeah. I also love that you're, you're willing to say that you don't know, and you're learning with your students. Cause we always preach that about splats too. You don't have to be an expert in block coding to use splats. Um, we want you to learn with your students and grow and make mistakes too. So that's amazing. So um, talking about learning with your students, what are some of the benefits you've seen? Um, I know you just shared a great anecdote about that, but any other benefits of learning alongside with your students? Yeah, I think, you know, for the most important thing is it's, it, it empowers them, right? Um, sorry, helping them to, to, to know that, you know, they're, as, as their teacher, I'm not always the expert in the room and that, and that's okay, right? They can be an expert at something. They can be a teacher um, for their classmates as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we all sort of, you know, grow and learn at, at, at the same pace. And then at, at some point, you know, student, some students will, will um, you know, take initiative and, and move off in, 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 in different directions. Um, but I think, you know, for with Splats in, in particular, um, what I what I love about because uh, because we're, we're one one iPad school, so we use the, the, the iPad apps, but um, there are some really great, great tutorials built into so this whole series of tutorials that we started with. Um, that was a great uh, um, starting point into exploring how to use Splat. So they all sort of started at the same place. And then um, once they once they understood those basics, they were able to to move on uh, for the most part on their own. Um, yeah, and then there's 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 a lot of I was just looking at the slide as a reminder, but there's some some really good pre-built games. I think I mentioned that earlier. We, we use a lot of the pre-built games in the beginning to just expose students to what's possible with splats. So that there's some really great examples in there to help help inspire them as well. Yeah, and I think too when you see your students motivated and excited about a certain topic, it kind of also re motivates the teacher or re energizes yeah. the teacher, and they want to find like how many unique ways can we now implement maybe this timer mm -hmm. into the day because they're so excited and it kind of challenges everyone to think um, more creatively, which is yeah. really great. <laughs> um, so I know we mentioned a lot about tutorials and pre-built games, so I wanted to take a moment to kind of share another lesson plan that we have um, and play a little bit of it. So we have this game called Lucky Splats. It's based off of a traditional Lunar New Year game that's played in Vietnam. So it's a it's traditionally a dice rolling game based off of numbers, um, but we actually have a colleague who grew up in Vietnam who, who um, took her personal experiences and created this lesson plan called Lucky Splats. So instead of dice and numbers, it's the splats and the colors. So I'm gonna pull this game up and we can play a few rounds so you can see what I mean. So this is what the code looks like. So you can see here when the program starts, um, there's three different splats and they have a random color. So it randomly um, selects colors through a certain amount of time. So that's what the code looks like. And then you go over to our scorecard um, and this is what the scorecard looks like. So you start with eight splats bucks or eight splats tokens, and then you place your bets um, or wagers on what colors you think are gonna appear out of the three splats. So there's red, um, yellow, green, blue, cyan, or purple. So based off of your eight tokens, you place your bet and then we'll run the code and see what colors appear. Then we'll either gain tokens or we'll lose tokens. So there's a few rounds of this, but we'll maybe start off with one or two. So does anyone have want to place any wagers for our team? Then we can see what we get. Let's do uh let's do four on green. Oh Lauren said two on purple. Four on green, two on purple. Mm, well so yeah, we have two, two left. More, we two can more. either we can save our tokens if we want to be oh. conservative or we can just spend them all right away and maybe lose them all. Spend spend them all she says. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's put let's, let's put one on blue and one on yellow. Yeah, that would be right. Great. Okay, so let's see. So now we'll go back to our code. Oh, it's too late, Lauren. We just spent them all. <laughs> uh, the game might end quickly. Uh, so we run it, and then uh oh, it looks like we got two scion and one. Oh, oh I think we picked up one then. We we we, we keeping one. 
Yeah, so maybe we yes. have one. So one <laughs> you could put there and then two. So we have two more left. So maybe we can move on to oh, yeah, one two more, more round. Um, so if we go to round two, it automatically right, brings sorry. your tokens over, which is really convenient. Um, so what do we want to do here? <laughs> hmm. What do you think, Chris, Janice? Help us out here. Send them all. What color? Oh, he's putting two, he's putting all of them on green, Chris. He said two <laughs> on green. Let's do it. Two on green. Okay. Let's hope for a green. <laughs> so you go back to our um our code and you run it again. Let's see. Oh, no. <laughs> so two, two red and one blue. Um, this is how I do it in real life. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, so then you'd go over here and you put two on red put on blue so then we end up with no tokens but that kind of um <laughs> kind of the gist of the game so each student can have like their own copy of their scorecard and i'll play it together and then at the end of round five you can compare how many tokens you have um so it's definitely a luck a luck of the draw but it's a great way to introduce probability and um kind of like scorekeeping with your students as well yeah i was i was just gonna say and, and uh, lauren just mentioned in the chat but I love like one of the one of the main selling points for me, um, not just the physical splat, but the virtual splats, right? That you know I, I don't have to have the physical splats out all the time, especially if we're still working on creating the code, because the kids can just instantly test it while they're inside the app, and and that was also a huge saving grace for me when we were in in virtual learning. I was able to continue using splats with kids at home um, because they could do all their programming and test out their their games um you know uh while they're at home they, they didn't need a physical splat so that, that was that's a really awesome feature and, and and it's fully interactive so you can you can click or tap on those splats and and play your game depending on how you've you've built it and they they light up and make all this the sound and everything so it's a really cool yeah. feature built in and then even like at home it kind of still really involves that engagement piece because it's all really just games so students are just excited to like play their games and experiment yeah. with them so i'm glad you got to use them over virtual learning um and that it was successful for you awesome so that's lucky spots that's um you can check out that lesson plan on our website too but moving on um, moving on to more of that coding and play. So how have you mixed coding and play in your classroom, uh, Michael? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it, it was definitely, for me, it was that, that exercise challenge, right? So, um, you know, again, students, they picked, so we, we, we brainstormed a list of, of exercises, you know, and that, that they do it in PE, right? So it was like jogging in place, relay races, um, jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, um, some of them came up with like, like ball toss activities. Um, and then, uh, they got to pick their favorite exercise. Um, and then they, they brainstormed, um, on, on paper, like what aspects of splats they wanted to incorporate into their game. So if it was like, uh, like jumping jacks, they would need, um, they, they could use two splats. So when they, their feet spread apart, they jump on the splats and then the splats would light up and make a noise and it would. It would track one on, on the scoreboard and then they would continue on. And, and um, I think some of them incorporated like, like a timer, right? So like you had one minute to do as many jumping jacks as you could. Um, yeah. And then from there, they, they built their program and, and tested it. They, they, they would do a little bit of testing in the virtual splats, but at some point they would need the physical splats. And so they would, they would get access to those and test it out. And then they would find a partner and share their, their um, their program with and have them test it and give feedback um, so that they could find ways to improve it or or you know adjust it or, or add something to it and then and then from there we we moved on to that that family day activity where the where the parents came and they had to do the physical exercises um, <laughs> and you know sweat a little bit um, but it was a really really fun experience. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And it also just goes back to the three pillars we kind of talked about in the beginning between the yeah. computer science, the physical movement, and then the collaboration of um, sharing it with other students and getting That's feedback really from them. So I love that you like really completed the circle there with that example. Mm -hmm. um, that's great did you ever have any like really big competitions with um any fitness challenges or was it more it just was, fun i think it was more like the parents 
<laughs> they were getting there, into there, it. Were, there were a few like like relay race activities that we had to put outside so you know so a couple of of the kids got got their parents involved and they would have like their parents would have relay race competitions it was kind of fun to watch really funny <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, we had one school to do like a Splats Olympics where it was like a school wide competition of different types of relay races and race and place games and like kind of seeing what grade would like come out on top. So there's a lot of like community building aspects to that Splats bring to the table. Yeah, great. Cool. Um, so now I know we've been talking so much about fitness and breaking a sweat. I thought we would um, break a sweat ourselves a little bit here with our unruly fitness packet. So this was a great um, packet that incorporates all types of movement challenges that have timers and stopwatches, as well as that physical movement aspect. So here it was really great, kind of like Michael mentioned during virtual learning for PE teachers because they could use these games to kind of get their students up and moving um, from home. So you can see in the middle, there's a, a little gif here of <laughs> students doing various exercises um, through the screen, which is really great to see. So now I'm gonna play, we're gonna play one more game today called the movement challenge, which is part of our fitness pack. So I'll pull up the code and then explain the game. But this one definitely would love to see everyone get out of their seats and participate if you want, it would be great. Stretch after a few of these sessions, a lot of talking. So I can pull up my projects here, and then I can load our movement challenge. So I'm gonna load this, and then I'm also gonna pull up kind of the, the score instructions so you can see both. Great, so for the movement challenge, um, it's basically a randomized exercise game. So with the code, when you start the program, it will make a random animal sound. And then you'll have five seconds to hear the animal sound and then match it up with the corresponding exercise. So then the timer will start and it will count down from 10 seconds and then you'll have 10 seconds to complete that exercise and then it will repeat three times. So we'll do three different exercises right now. Um, so I'll give everyone a minute to get ready and comfortable. I'll, I'll probably have to stand up, <laughs> but let's see how it goes. Um, everyone wants to give me a thumbs up when they're ready. It's really great to stand. It actually feels really good. Okay, so let's see. Everyone can see that, so stop. Little click spot one. That's a cat. So let's see. The cat is run in place. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Perfect. Okay, five second break. Let's see what's next. What is that? Duck. A duck? Okay, so toe touches. Ten, nine, okay. eight. I think like toe touches like seven, this. <laughs> six, five, four, three, two, one. Amazing. I don't know. <laughs> A dog. So mountain climbers. That one you kind of have ten, to. I'll do it off nine, my desk. Eight, <laughs> seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Great. <laughs> Only did three exercises. Not too intense, but. Um, they my steps in for the day. Thanks, thanks, Marissa. Yeah, we just got a ton of steps in. <laughs> So that's great. That's just one of the examples in our fitness um, pack that kind of gets everyone up and moving, especially when you're staring at a screen all day. It's really good. Um, so like a great uh, brain break activity too. In the class. Yeah, it is a good brain break activity. I know I'm like out of breath now, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's great. Yeah, after um, yeah, idea, yeah, Chris, after school programs, it'd be really fun. Yeah, we have a ton of different um, variations of this too. We have a couple in this activity pack where you kind of, it's a more of a timer and you track how many um, like crunches you can do in the 30 second period of time too, kind of like you were explaining um, earlier. So there's a, a lot of different variations. I like that one the most because it has animal sounds um, and it's fun, <laughs> but awesome. So moving on 
yeah, we'd love to hear um, from the chat. How do you encourage movement in your classrooms throughout the day? Do you have any special games you play, techniques you have, um, advice you're looking for? So feel free to share. I know we saw recess and summer camps, which are great ideas. Anyone yeah. else? Have any tips on how they've increased, encouraged movement? a few seconds. Oh yeah, yoga is a great idea. It's just relaxing too to focus on your breath. I love that, Lauren. <laughs> great, so feel free to keep writing in the chat, but we'll move on. Um, so to kind of wrap us up, um, Michael, what advice do you have for teachers who are new to computer science? Yeah, I would think, you know, don't don't feel like you have to be the, the all knowing sage at the front of your your classroom. You know, I I, I you know, make it a point to explore new things with my students um, and, and be at the same level as them, because I think it's a it's a more fun experience for me to learn alongside them and, you know, to to feel the same excitement as they feel when we, we come across something new or we, we learn how to do something ourselves. Um, and um, you know, with Splats in particular, um, the the tutorials to, that are built into the app is is a really great starting point, I think, because um, it's it's a step by step learning how each each uh, block works and and why you would use a particular block. Um, so so working through those together with your students is is a great place to to get started as as someone new to using Splats specifically, um, and. Uh, I, I I don't know if you guys I I, I talked about uh, you know failure or or failing earlier, but you know fail to me is is an acronym. I don't know if you guys know the acronym for fail. Do you do you know what it is, Marissa? I'm not familiar with that. In the chat, but um, for us, fail means uh, not first. It used to be first attempts in learning, but it's frequent attempts in learning, right? Because you know we we always say when you fail. You just found one way not to do it, and you you move forward and try to learn a a better way, right? Um, so for us, you know, failing is expected. Um, it's encouraged, right? Because it's it's all part of the, the the learning process, and so it should be the same for us as teachers too. You know, not to be afraid to to fail, not to feel like you need to know everything. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love that acronym. I've never heard that. But yeah, I think failing is great. It's kind of, it builds resiliency, but also teaches you a lot of lessons. So that's really great advice. Thank you for sharing. Um, yes, fail forward. Fail forward. Perfect. Um, great. So kind of to wrap it up, I wanted to go over kind of what's included in our enrolly memberships. I did see some questions about this. So you're not just buying the physical um, splats, you're buying the software, the hardware, as well as our school success team. So we have a really great school success team who constantly working with educators to create new lesson plans, um, new events, as well as providing that ongoing coaching and support. So we have weekly onboarding training. So if you ever have, and we also have unlimited seats for students and educators. So if you have spots at your school and, an ed and fellow educators, like that's so great. I want to have my students do that. They can easily just hop onto one of our trainings and we'll get them set up. So it's really meant for community building um, as well as sharing. So Another benefit is spots are covered under a warranty. I know Michael mentioned he saw that crazy durability video of, of spots never breaking, but if they do by chance happen to break, we'll, we'll ship you out a new one. Um, great things like that. And another great, awesome thing we have is, or what was that? Go ahead. You guys definitely stand by your product. It's, it's a durable product. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with all those stumps, it's great. We also, Additionally, I wanted to uh, mention that we do like um, community events every few months. So we recently just did one called Stomp Madness. Um, so for all of month, all of the month of March, we it was a take on March Madness. So each stomp on a splat in any school over the nation, we would donate one penny to Kambu to Kambu to. K to Kaboom, sorry, a nonprofit that builds play spaces for lower income areas. So it was a really great challenge for students to kind of like test their, how many stomps they can get. And it was motivating. And they were also really excited to know that their stomps were going to a good cause. So we do all sorts of events like that, which are really fun. Yeah. Um, 
So that's our membership. If you're interested in learning more about that, Lauren can drop um, drop the link to set up a call with one of our account executives, but it's a great tool overall. So also definitely follow us along on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Also, I added Michael's Twitter um, handle there too. I, he found us on Twitter. We're always sharing our new less, lesson plans, teacher stories, experiences, and stuff like that. So we're really about building that community. So definitely check us out. But at this time, I kind of want to open it up for any other questions. I know a few members showed up a little late. So if you have any questions about the splats or the product or anything like that, um, or any questions for Michael, feel free to drop them in the chat now. Yeah. Hey, Michael, this is uh, Dave Becker. So, and really it's kind of for Chris a little bit, but Michael and I were carrying on private conversation. One team, I know that motto at Iolani and my family that. That connection. All over there and they teach over there and stuff. So it's kind of a small world for me. Chris sent me the deal and I was like, oh, wow, you know? So anyways, um, what for us, you know, over here at Chris, and I don't know, Sarah, if you can answer, um, you know, we're always looking for that seamless transition, I guess, from K-12 through to post-secondary. Um, how's, what are we doing over the summer to maybe incorporate this or is that possible? I know I was on private with Chris about, hey, this would be good for CC's camp, all that stuff. And then follow up to that, Michael, is I know Iolani, like everybody was in, you know, the COVID deal. How much did this contribute to your being able to fill the gap, I guess, with online stuff, or was it a, you know, a tool that you emphasized at even in classwork? Um, Cause there's so many tools out there. But. So two questions in there, one for my folks and one for you, Michael. Do you want me to answer first? Is that okay? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, it, yeah, for me, it, it def it, we were already um, working with splats um, in school, in, in my technology class last school year before the pandemic started. So it, it, it was, for us, it was a pretty easy transition to online learning. Um, but what made it even easier, as I mentioned earlier, was the fact that there are those, those virtual splats in the iPad app. So we weren't limited by needing um, the physical splats to create programs and test those programs. They were able to do that um, uh, for, uh, uh, from home. So we, in, I think uh, um, the splats team put out a a really cool packet of um, uh, uh, music-based lessons that we incorporated um, when we were in online uh, learning at the end of last school year. So the kids were, were creating their own band instruments and, and creating their own music. I think they they created a program to, what was it? What was the song? It was one of those nursery rhymes. I forget which one, but, but one of the lessons was they, they had to learn how to use one of the instruments to, to recreate a, a nursery rhyme um, song. Um, yeah, but just, just having those, those virtual spots in there, uh, really, really helped to, to continue moving things forward. I, I didn't, for me, it, it didn't feel like I had to do something, um, completely different or start over with something new. It was, it was a nice transition, you know, because of, of all of the, the features and tools that are already incorporated into the app. And then Chris, I don't know if you, sure. Or did I put you on the spot? Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I'm super intrigued by, you know, this whole program. I uh, was able to watch Lauren from Unruly uh, do, a, do this same presentation at a conference a few weeks ago. So I was really stoked to have them here today. And um, my the part that intrigues me about it is that uh, it gets kids moving, too. Um, and then it's a, a cool way to introduce some of these concepts of, you know, coding, design thinking, computational thinking that happens, you know, the whole algorithm thing, you know, movement is all algorithm and, and you know, um, that's what I love as a way to, you know, as you and I have talked, David, about trying to, you know, create a pathway for computer science all the way over to LB here at the community, community college. And, and one thing that's missing is a lot of this at the elementary level. So I think this is a the coding club that um, we just started in our 
ramping up and getting ready to launch, I think this can go into that too and, and be super fun. So I'm happy to talk with you, Sarah, I'm sure would be too. And um, Janice Hardy is here as also. Janice is uh, a grant writer with Albany Public Schools Foundation. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of great potential here. I agree with that. So I hey, just want to thank you and Marissa too. I've got to go to an OER meeting. So, you know, there's a, this is like meeting day galore, but uh, just, yeah, thanks, Chris too and, and Sarah. So we'll see you, Michael. Have a good one and thanks. Thank you. See you. Take care, man. Aloha. Uh, aloha. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for stopping yeah. in. See you. Thank you. Yeah, great. We have a few more minutes if anyone else has any other questions, but um, it's the end of our session. So feel free to um, bounce if you have to. But Dave's question raised a question for me about um, the target age or, or grade levels for first flats. Yeah, so um, we have lesson plans made really from K through eight. So it's really an elementary and middle school tool as of right now. Yeah. But more like when you're younger, obviously, it's more like educator help. So like maybe when you're in kindergarten, the kindergarten, the educator has the code kind of on the screen and they ask what um, what block do you want to change or maybe what sound do you want to put in? And it's kind of more like hand holding hand holding, but then as they get older, they kind of start really diving in and creating their own games. Like right now we're doing um, this event called the Gameathon, where it's kind of just a game creation contest and students are submitting their own coded games that they've created with their splats. So there's endless opportunities there with um, game creation too. That's great, thank you. All right, well, if I there just... are any other, yeah, go ahead, Michael. That wasn't oh, me. That was me. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to. I just wanted to comment. I guess um, more than a question, but um, I I have a daughter who uh, is twelve. Isn't super active. Loves being on the screen. Loves being. Um, she's in sixth grade. Loves coding. She codes in Scratch. Um, do you have? Do you, do you do memberships for individual families and parents? Do you do, do you offer that for parents who might be um, homeschooling? I mean, do you have programs available for like homeschooling or online school type programs? Um, as of right now, we only offer school memberships. That being said, maybe there's a, like a way for them to so if she if her school ha offers this program she can use the app at home and then use some of our virtual games gotcha. that include movement at home but um right now we don't offer um packages just for families but we also additionally offer a family engagement program for some of our memberships that we do host like family events. So like, kind of like Michael was saying, we invite family to come, we invite family members to come and join us while we play an activity with them and stuff like that. But as of right now, we don't offer um, home purchases. Great, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. If there's no other questions, well, I want to thank everyone too for your time today. Thank you, Michael, for being our guest presenter today. It was really great to hear your stories. And thank you, Chris and Sarah, for setting this up too. It was awesome. Thank you so much for being Thanks, everyone. here. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Um, happy STEM week. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. All right. Cool, thanks again, you all. We'll um, share that video out for folks who couldn't uh, join us. And um, thanks especially for that early early start to the morning there in island time. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All thanks right. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank, thanks, thank you, Marissa. Thank thanks, you, Michael. Marissa. Thanks, Chris. And um, I'll be in touch with, uh, we'll be in touch. We'll talk more here and try and come up with a plan. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, sounds great. Really interested. So awesome. thank you so awesome. much. Thank you, great everyone. Have a great day. Bye.